Hello and welcome students to the YouTube channel of Shri Vashist Vidyalaya. I am your teacher Vijay Singh is here to present you with today's topic. Well, our today's topic is something very much important. It is the poem Amanda. Uh, proceeding further with uh, this topic, uh, which is titled Amanda, the poem. It is composed by a uh, very well-known Australian poetess. Her name is Robin McMaff Klein. We can, in short, call her Robert Klein, uh, Robin Klein, and uh, Robin Klein has uh, always been into the limelight because she wrote a lot of literature for children, uh, youngs, and adults, and uh, she has added a worthy collection to the English literature. Proceeding further with the poem which we are going to study, Amanda. This is a very beautiful poem. From my point of view, if I say this poem is very much clearly relatable to your personal lives because this poem is composed from the point of view of a little girl she is of she is of 12 uh, or 13 year uh, a, a girl who is 12 or 13 years old her name is amanda now the poem is all about what amanda's mother tells her about what to do and what not to do and how does Amanda react on that? How does Amanda react on that? So we can say that this is a kind of two-way conversation between Amanda and her mother. Her mother speaks something to her about how she should behave and what etiquette she should have. But Amanda always thinks of not following the instruction given by her mother. She thinks her mother always tells her that she, sh she should uh, follow the etiquettes and manners of, uh, of what we can say, what, what the society sees them right. But Amanda is not at all ready to accept all those things. So this is just, uh, we can say, a conversation where Amanda does not speak, but she thinks that how her life should be or how, how does she imagine her life. Let us proceed further with the poem. I'd like to, uh, I, I will start with the first stanza of the poem so as we have discussed that this poem is all about uh, Amanda is constantly being pointed out by her mother for making lots of mistakes uh, the mistakes that are sometimes not accepted by the society so let's proceed further with the first stanza of the poem the first stanza is don't bite your nails Amanda don't hunch your shoulders Amanda Stop that slouching and sit up straight, Amanda. There is a languid emerald sea where the sole inhabitant is me, a mermaid drifting blissfully. This stanza, the first or opening lines are spoken by the mother of Amanda and the next line are what Amanda thinks about how life should be. So the poem opens with when Amanda's mother asks her to not to bite her nails and to not to hunch her shoulders. Hunching means this, when we, when we sit so comfortably, when we, when we do not sit in uh, a good posture, when we say that we are hunching our shoulders. So the opening lines of the poetry are, don't bite your nails, Amanda, don't hunch your shoulders, where Amanda's mother is, is denying, she is forbidding her to not to bite her nails and to not to hunch her shoulders. Means she is, she is asking her to sit in a good posture. Sitting in a bad posture or biting nails is of course not accepted by the, by the um, elite society or what we can say a good society. Then Amanda thinks how her life should be. She thinks there is a languid emerald sea. Languid means something uh, which is, uh, we, we can say, uh, relaxed or flurry. And emerald means green. There is a languid emerald sea where the sole inhabitant is me. Amanda says that there should be a sea, a very relaxed, a green sea, where I should be the sole inhabitant. Inhabitant means the person who lives. Like a mermaid drifting blissfully. Make mermaid kitra rahu. Joki bilkul blissfully means very happily. Or me bilkul khushi se us pani ke andar gote lagati rahu. So what the first stanza is, the first stanza is all about where Amanda's mother forbids her to not to bite her nails and she asks her to sit in a good posture and not to hunch her shoulders. But what does Amanda think? She thinks that, kya yaar, mommy to din bar kehti rehti ye mat karo, wo mat karo, don't do this, don't do that. But what kind of life do I want? 
that should be a big emerald relaxed sea and I should be a mermaid and I should live in that sea solo. There should be no other animal except me in that sea and I shall be blissfully, I shall be happily in that sea. That, that kind of life does Amanda want when her mother asks her to not to do certain things. Let us proceed further with the second stanza of the poem. The second stanza is... So the second stanza is... Did you finish your homework, Amanda? Did you tidy your room, Amanda? I thought I told you clean your shoes, Amanda. I am an orphan roaming the streets. I pat in soft dust with my hushed bare feet. The silence is golden, the freedom is sweet. These are the lines that were spoken by Amanda. So the uh, opening lines of second stanza are spoken by her mother. And then she replies, she thinks, in, uh, the, she thinks something inside her. So what does her mother say? What does her mother speak? Uh, she says, did you finish your homework, Amanda? Did you tidy up your room, Amanda? I thought I told you to clean up your shoes. The mother says, did you clean your room? She orders, I told you to clean your room, did you do? I told you to tidy up your, uh, I, I told you to finish your homework, did you do? I told you to clean up your room, did you do? I told you to clean up your shoes, did you do? Lots of uh, clean the room, tidy, uh, uh, tidy up the room and clean the shoes and do the homework, do this, do that and lots of work. Then Amanda thinks, why to do this much of work? Amanda thinks, I wish I was an orphan. Orphan means a person who does not have parents. Orphan means a person who does not have mother and father. Amanda thinks, if I was an orphan, all the time roaming in the streets. I pat in soft dust with my hushed bare feet. I pat in soft dust means, she says, if I was an orphan, I would walk in the soft dust. Soft dust means, zameen pe jo barik mitti padi rehti wo. She says, agar mein anath hoti, agar mein orphan hoti, to kitna maza ta. Din bar mein apne nangye pairo se uske upar ghoomti aur apne nangye pairo ke footage, apne nangye pairo ke nishan us soft dust par bana di thi. So she says, if I was an orphan roaming in the street, I pet in soft dust with my hushed bare feet. The silence is golden, the freedom is sweet. What kind of silence? The silent is golden means there was nobody to order me. There was nobody to tell me, Amanda, do this, Amanda, do that, Amanda, you didn't do this, Amanda, you didn't do that, Amanda, like this, Amanda, sit like that, Amanda, sit like this, Amanda, do this. No, nothing, no orders, just happiness. Just relax, just be comfortable and no work. And that is what Amanda feels like is freedom. But actually it is not. Amanda is feeling like this because she is quite immature. She doesn't even know what value do the parents hold in her life. Amanda is just trying to escape the responsibilities and work which is being led upon her by her mother. She doesn't want to do that work. That's it. And that is what, that is what she thinks uh, we can say freedom. But that's not exactly what we can call a freedom because being an orphan is not that easy. Being an orphan is, is it's really very tough. We always, we always face problems which could have probably uh, solved by the parents. But just because the parents are not here, we are stuck into those problems. So this is what second stanza has to say. Now let's proceed further. Uh, I think all of you did understand the first and second stanza of this poem. In the next video, we will discuss few things, the, the hard words of this poem and the remaining stanza of this poem. And also we shall discuss the important figure of speech that has been used in this poem. Till then, thank you so much. Thank you for watching this video. I hope all of you did understand this. Stay safe, stay well. Thank you.